Hello everybody, my name is Adam Mullis and this presentation is about Wellness Week, which is a fun way to promote physical activity, physical education, health and wellness school-wide. The first thing I wanna start off with is saying thank you so much for being here. I know that it's been a crazy year for everyone. I know how much effort you've put into helping children in your unique way. So thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. A little bit about me before we get started. I've taught in South Carolina for five years and I'm currently uh, teaching in Georgia. I've taught middle school my whole career. So yes, I'm a little bit off my rocker. Um, I have a master's in education um, along and I'm trying <laughs> eventually, hopefully I'll finish my dissertation uh, in health education and promotion. When I was in South Carolina, I was the co-lead teacher of middle school health and PE. And I also was involved in my uh, state association. So to give you an overview, at my last school, Creighton Middle School, which is in Columbia, South Carolina, um, Wellness Week began, started as an idea to promote the Alliance for a Healthier Generation program, which if you don't know, I'll give you a short overview. The program is about promoting health and wellness, both in the classroom, the school, and the community. And if you've never heard of it before, I really would give it a Google, because it's a great way to give you incentive to do lots of things that will promote health and wellness school-wide. But long story short, this program, we needed to celebrate um, our achievement as a wellness committee. Thus, I was like, Wellness Week would be a great idea to do that. And that's kind of how the idea started. So to give you a brief overview, um, I've been doing Wellness Week for four years, three at my last school, and we'll start it this year again, actually, um, at the end of March. Um, the goal of Wellness Week is to um, promote health and wellness. It's that simple. Simple. The best, uh, the motto is be the best version of your of you. Um, to me, health and wellness is always about being the best version of yourself. I don't want to make health and wellness scary. I want it for kids to help to understand that health and wellness will help them do whatever it is that they want to do. Um, it's basically spirit week. Um, it's supposed to make health and wellness fun. It's supposed to promote and advertise healthy lifestyle. The days of Wellness Week were based off of data from the YRBSS um, and also some teacher and input of what the, the biggest health factors for our student were and what we could do. Um, in short, every day um, there would be a theme and according to that theme, there would be announcements. So if it was healthy eating, it'd be you know, something about healthy eating and I'll show you examples later. Um, I'd present to the staff about Wellness Week. Um, we'd have physical activity challenges for students, uh, step challenges for teachers. We could, at, at some years, we had wristbands. Um, I'll talk about athletic wear passes, which is a great way to motivate teachers. Um, we got community members to donate massages, and we partnered with local farmers, and I'll talk about that as well. And then, of course, lots of promoting with signs and social media, which I will show you as we go on. So where when I got rolling with Wellness Week, I'd always start the summer before. Um, keep in mind, this is probably like the second or third year I did it because there are so many things on a school calendar. So I would go to my boss. I say, hey, boss, I want to do Wellness Week at this month. What's on the school calendar? Do we could we provide any funds for it? Um, and we would decide on the best date. And, you know, if there is any funding, what can we do with it to promote health and wellness? So this is an example of the, one of the wellness weeks we did. We had sleep day, advocate for your cure day, a healthy eating day, a physical activity day, and then be kind day. And notice all of those things relate like to healthy habits, whether it's, you know, bullying awareness or advocating healthy eating um, all of which are, of course, um, things statistically, particularly in South Carolina, that uh, children may or may not be getting enough of, for example, vegetables with healthy eating. Another example, um, uh, which actually, which was last year, right before the pandemic hit. However, 
Um, we had sleep day, advocate for a cure day, healthy eating day, physical activity day, and be kind. So it would, it would change and morph a little bit as we saw fit. This is an example of a, a simple physical activity log. Um, the idea is obviously to promote physical activity and get kids excited. Um, before the pandemic, rewards would be like, hey, if you're a homeroom or you're A block, whatever, however you say classes at your school gets the most steps and you can come to the gym and have like an extra, you know, 20 minutes or you can go outside. We wanted to promote healthy rewards and it was simply done. It could be done with a Google Microsoft form and calculated relatively easy, even with 610 responses, as you see there. The step challenge is a huge deal. Um, the particularly school that I worked in in South Carolina was known as that school who always did super duper well in test scores. Um, so probably, you know, from the outside looking in, you might be nervous that the teachers wouldn't want to participate in this or even get their students involved. It's pretty simple. So I put a giant poster on each hallway, sixth grade hallway, seventh grade hallway, eighth grade hallway, and, and teachers have to log their steps each day. Boy, teachers got into it. Um, we did sweeten the deal with the winning team would get massages that were donated from a local community, but um, I'll show you another reward that's possible as well. And teachers would actually take their class and walk around the building like on a Friday if they had five, six minutes left to try to get more steps. So the whole school really did get involved with this. Um, like I said, if you know funding's not available, if you're looking for something creative, Athletic wear passes, especially if you're in the building, can be great, um, which basically means teachers can wear sweatpants. And holy moly, if you can get your teachers, everybody to wear sweatpants, they will love you forever. And it's a great way to promote health and wellness as well to be physically active in active work clothing. Um, here's a sample announcement. So it's, ha it's uh, Happy Wellness Week. This one talks about sleep and why sleep is important. Just trying to advocate, you know, put away your electronics, go to bed at the um, same time, try to wake up at the same time, try to promote those healthy habits because kids are not. Um, I mean, they're not, they, they always need that reminder of consistent sleep. One year we were able to get wristbands um, that said, be the best version of you. And my... I was very fortunate to do this. It's not always been the case, but once again, just trying to promote, 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 promote. Um, you know, advertisement is a billion dollar industry. Forgive me for the <laughs> ambulance, um, but advertisement is a billion dollar industry because um, it works. I think as PE teachers, we need to find, PE and health teachers, we need to find ways to promote um, what we're trying to do. And that may not be via, you know, items, because obviously that can get expensive, but it can be through social media and other things like that. So this is an example of, of the kids participating in sleep day, and they wore their pajamas and stuff like that. Had a lot of fun with that. Um, this is physical activity today, teachers getting into like rock climbing gear and just being physically active. I had some <clears throat> wonderful teachers that I've worked with that would participate and promote. Um, another great way to have teachers involved is have something like a door uh, competition in which they have to you know, advocate for a healthy habit. Um, once again, you know, having some reward is probably a good way to getting them involved, or maybe you could do this digitally. Um, we'll talk about that at the end as well. But we had one that related to mental health, um, advocating for a cure, um, which was a beautiful door. Um, this one was a hit off of a hit song, Seven Rings at the moment. And they promoted with different, um, you know, categories of health and wellness. This one was a Spanish teacher who did a great job promoting washing your hands and sleeping and things like that. And another one on sleeping and why you should do it. Um, another thing we had with Advocate for Cure Day is was really cool that some teachers would wear, for example, pink, and, and they would share with their classes and me uh, personal stories about why that mattered um, to them. And 
you know, the whole idea of that is that a healthy lifestyle can prevent some of these things. Um, and there's more examples of, you know, dressing your favorite uh, fruit day and they'd have different um, colors and, you know, be certain things. For example, Miss, one of our teachers was a fruit salad, which I love absolutely. Another easy thing to do with uh, Wellness Week was um, compliment Friday, which was another thing we would just take it off and give it to another student. Once again, this was pre-COVID and hopefully we can get back to that someday soon. Um, I've done this presentation um, and a person in my district loved the idea. And so she actually did it with high school, just to give you some more ideas what it could be. So as you can see, um, you know, we got healthy lung workshop from anything to sweat your socks off. And this was actually at high school. So I just wanted to provide some of those examples of what she did of taking that wellness week, um, which I thought was great. So to give you some more detail about like how this happened in a timeline, um, first thing, you know, if you're trying to create your own wellness week is who can help you? Um, and then what does the data say? Next thing, it's easy enough if you can get someone who's creative and good with graphics is creating a flyer and then start looking up information about announcements. It's not, I wouldn't say, you know, you can do wellness week however you want, but this is how we did it. And trying to give yourself enough time to complete these things with all the other things you need to do as a teacher. Um, presenting the information to the faculty and staff is huge and getting them excited because you as a PE teacher, you know, you love your kids, you want to make relationships with everybody, but you can't reach every single student, but other teachers can help you do that as well. Um, athletic wear pass was a huge motivator. Um, it was free, it was simple. Obviously with virtual teaching, it may not be the best reward, <laughs> but um, still a good way to promote uh, health and wellness. Creating charts is another thing that is simple, but time consuming. Um, and then creating a physical activity form for students. Uh, next, of course, creating that rubric, um, asking companies for, you know, you'd be surprised if you can email companies and what they'll give you sometimes, particularly if they're local. Um, ordering promotional items and then start promoting to your school on the announcements, promote, promote, promote. And yeah, so now that I'm at a new school, I'm, I'm looking back at my journey of how I first started Wellness Week and I was like, hmm, try to do it all by myself. Um, it was efficient, but kind of drove myself into the ground trying to get everything done for Wellness Week as long, along with trying to be a good teacher. So this time it started more organically. And I say that by, I gathered a bunch of people and I was like, hey, I wanna make a wellness team. I wanna improve, what can we do? This is what I've done at my school before. Uh, how can we promote health and wellness in a fun way? So I had other team members input. They thought of some things like, for example, instead of just taking um, with the step challenge, instead of just taking everyone's step, you have an average team step for that day and then add it up. Um, of course, with, you know, the pandemic, we needed to be aware of how to um, incorporate online students so they can still participate with the form of the physical activity challenge with that link. And they can also participate in trivia, which I've never done any kind of trivia about wellness, which I was like, wow, that's a great idea to get them involved. Um, we created a plan. I spoke with my boss and I had to sell the product. And um, the truth of the matter is I know that with change, particularly with promoting health and wellness, it is slow. So why I put the first year will not be as great as the third year is because kids need to catch on, adults need to catch on, and we'll do similar things and honestly have similar days. Um, but that, that promotion piece will take a while. So the third year that I do wellness week at my new school will hopefully be much better and have much more participation. So don't get discouraged. Um, with this new 
school, we've also decided to do a public service announcement, which means kids will create um, up to a 90 second public service announcements about any of the themes that you see for on, on the screen, any of the themes, Mindful Monday, Take a Bite Out of Wellness, uh, Water Wednesday, Thoughtful Thursday, and Fitness Friday. Um, and I, we've never done that before. We're trying to get uh, water bottles and yoga mats and footballs and stuff from the community to incentivize people to do that. Um, but hopefully, you know, I know if students do it, it will be fantastic. And this example of the PSA contest, um, this is actually going to be March 19th, um, which I'm really excited to see what they do. So to, you know, start wrapping it up, if you wanted to create your own wellness week, here are some questions that I would ask you to think about as a guide. Who do you have that can help you? Is it that, you know, that math teacher that loves to run the 5Ks and that's all about it? Is it the school nurse? Um, and what does the data say about your location? Honestly, even data from 2019 will be, you know, different because the pandemic hit. And obviously, as a teacher, you can probably have some insight of how your kids are feeling right now. But what can you do to, to promote health and wellness for what they're dealing with? Um, start simple. I threw a lot of ideas at you. I would start as absolute simple as possible and then add to it each year. Um, does, can your principal or anyone provide any funding? Can you get donations? Um, what community partners could be willing to donate prizes? Um, a local hospital system, um, even a health and wellness store with, you know, Trader Joe's comes to mind. Um, Students are super important, but don't forget about your staff. Your staff is gonna help sell this to other kids that you may not be able to reach. Um, something that I think about often about Wellness Week is actually, is it working? Now from you know, anecdotal evidence, I think my, my school was much more involved in health and wellness, but I wish I had something to prove that. Um, competition is a great way to motivate middle schoolers and I think teachers as well. Um, that's my, you know, philosophy, and I, I think it can work well in a healthy way. Um, another thing is, who else can you bring in? For example, I, I worked at a middle school where some of the high school coaches were legends um, to a middle school kid. So can you, can you get someone from your community to promote health and wellness? Make it fun. Um, some of your teachers and some of your students have a, have a mindset about health and wellness that it's, it's about starving yourself and working out until you hate it which I think, you know, health and wellness should and can be fun. Um, maybe besides Wellness Week, you, you put it in a year-long setting and do something once a month so it's less taxing. Um, things will maybe be a little bumpy the first time, they'll get better. Um, I would really love at some point, even if it's virtually, to do a nutrition demonstration for staff and students. Um, we've done activities from the garden, which have been absolutely wonderful. Um, if you have that access to or could do that. And a lot of these ideas can adapt to being online. So I have provided some resources for you. Um, I have the PowerPoint. Um, I have an overview of the written plan. Um, I have a sample pass, athletic word pass, if you want to steal that, and a sample flyer. So I hope that's helpful. Um, before to, to get us interactive and communicating, if you, when you watch this presentation, I'd love if you would just scan the QR code with your phone or enter that link. If you've never used Flipgrid before, it's an awesome tool. Um, you just post a video and, um, I want you to post about, you know, what ideas you have about Wellness Week for your own. What could you do at your school in your situation? Because obviously I think every school district is a little bit different in, you know, virtual, virtual, face-to-face, face-to-face, and virtual. Um, even if we can't physically be near each other in a school building, there's still time to promote health and wellness. If you need me, um, Twitter is a good way to reach me, or you can email me at mullispe at gmail.com. Once again, I can't thank you enough 
uh, for being with us today, and I appreciate it. And I hope this has given you at least one idea to promote health PE, physical activity, and school-wide wellness. So thank you so much, and I hope that you have a wonderful uh, rest of your conference. Have a great day. Thank you.